Hey now, I'm Stuart K. Riley, and we're counting down the top five worst Metal Gear games. It's time for number four. Metal Gear Solid Mobile on the Nokia phone. Also released for the N-Gage. Remember that thing? Me neither. Once upon a time before the iPhone ruined us all, Nokia was the big cheese in cell phones, and in the mid-2000s, cell phones started using Java as an operating system, and many games were made for Java. They were the first real modern mobile games. And you didn't play them with a touchscreen. No, sir, you played them with a keypad. Phones had physical buttons and no touchscreens. I I remember playing Sonic Jump on my Motorola Razor flip phone as a young teenager. Those are not times that I miss. But in 2008, Java phones decided to go from Snake to Solid Snake with MGS Mobile, a near fully fleshed out 3D Metal Gear game. The story takes place between MGS 1 and 2, with Solid Snake infiltrating a facility that Snake and Otacon have been told is housing a Metal Gear. So Snake has to crawl through the vents and suss it out. Notice how I said suss and vent and not once made an among joke. Only quality memes on this show. Wow, listen to that stanky midi. Sounds like somebody threw up on a Casio. <laughs> that just sounds pathetic. Because of the way this game is made, you can't really go diagonally. You have to go up, down, left, or right. And it took me a while to get these controls set up right. Nobody in 2008 thought some idiot would try to play this on a keyboard later on. I mean, overall, it's trying its best to be MGS2. You got the hiding under cameras. You got the first person shooting. You got the textures and assets, which clearly look ripped from MGS2. You got auto aim, which I highly appreciate. That definitely would have helped somebody playing this on a phone. Going back to the music, this game only has one main theme and it uses it throughout 90% of the game. You get real tired of it after a while. There's also this weird mini game you have to do in the codec where you have to match up the green dot with the blue lines. Don't you love hacking mini games? At least it's not that Bioshock shit. The story starts hitting a lot of those Metal Gear tropes. Snake just blindly following orders, the damsel in distress, the strange codec call from an unknown person. It's all here. Just need a couple of people to die from fox die and a crazy plot twist and we got us a metal gear game oh yeah the game also has this camo mechanic where you can take a picture of something with your camera in real life or in the game and your sneaking suit will change color and certain areas require you to do that or it will sound an alarm or lock the door in front of you luckily it straight up gives you the color somewhere nearby either way that's the game's special little gimmick i believe mgs3 on the 3ds ended up having a similar thing man what a weird port that was my main problem with this game is everything looks the same. It's so easy to get lost in this game because you don't know what door goes where because it all looks the same and there's no map. I had to duck duck go me a map so I could figure out where in the hell I was going. Most of your shooting is going to be done with a tranquilizer gun. The SOCOM is in the game but you never get a suppressor for it. The main reason it's here is so you can shoot those little control units that are hooked to the laser grids. And the game even thought to get rid of any soldiers in the areas that have those laser grids, so that takes any of the difficulty out of it. Wasn't that nice of them? Well, as it turns out, this facility has its very own Metal Gear Rex, and Otacon is acting a little sussy, and the strange calls are still happening. Now it's straight up referencing MGS2 with the guy saying, turn off the phone, and the plot twist is, it's assimilation, and Otacon is an AI. You've been talking to an AI. Let me just pause for a bit and mention this. A couple of months ago, I would have been complaining like hell because I had to download a one gigabyte video just to get that one clip, but I recently got Starlink and went from one megabit per second to 150. Unless I actually tested the piece of shit! Now that's not a problem anymore. I'm still not used to it. I feel like I've been released from a POW camp where they only gave me dial-up for 20 years. Okay, I love this scene right here. <laughs> it's like they had to think about it for a minute. So Snake was captured by an unknown group, wink wink the Patriots, drugged and forced to complete a simulation, which is a callback to how everything that happened in MGS2 was... Well, if you haven't played that game yet, I won't spoil it for you, but it's a crazy Kojima plot twist. So this whole game is nothing but MGS2 references from top to bottom, and Snake learns from the real Otacon that if he completes the simulation, he'll be able to leave it. But quite literally, if you die in the game, you die in in real life, oh shit!
It is now that we finally get to see the final boss. Some guy with a minigun. No way! It was him all along! Really? I mean, it could have been Raven with a minigun, but no, it's this new character they made up that I could really give less of a shit about. He's aggravating to fight, too. You have to wait for his minigun to overheat, then run all the way to the corner and shoot a Nikita missile at him. And... Well, that's it. They do try to change it up by adding a soldier in the middle of it, but after that, it's the same old stuff. And oh no, the Matrix is having a heart attack. Hurry up, hard serpent. Oh, I got an achievement. Is that the one you get for playing this game without committing Sudoku? The next thing you see is Snake looking up at the ceiling while people are talking about him with some MGS2 spoilers at the end. And that's the game. You just watched all there really is to see about MGS Mobile. Really not much more I can add. I mean, it is what it is. A janky primitive mobile game. But if I had to say anything about it, at least it's a janky primitive mobile game with no microtransactions, no advertisements, and no Bitcoin mining in the background. It's just a game. It's just a game. Just not a very good one. Is it worse than Portable Ops? I don't know. Portable Ops had no excuse for being as bad as it was since it had Kojima backing it semi. This barely had Kojima's involvement and was released on pretty limited hardware, so you could argue that's the reason it's not very good. I can't imagine trying to play this on an old school flip phone back in the day. Plus, I bet downloading the game would have really fucked up your phone bill. I remember my old man whipping my ass for downloading a game on my phone and using up all our data. I tell you what though, I learned the value of a dollar, one smack with a belt for every dollar I spent. It ain't no fun being a kid in the South. You learn lessons by getting the shit beat out of you. And by God, it turned me into the paranoid, mentally unstable, autistic person I am today. Thanks, Dad. So that was number four on the top five worst Metal Gear games of all time. I'll see you guys next week at number three. Till then, I'm Stuart K. Riley. See y'all.